Big Brother came about because Trails World wouldn't run one of our ads. So I created a magazine just so I could put my own ads in it. Let's give guys $1,000 a month and they can write whatever they want and do whatever they want. It was four dudes with a computer yeah. when Photoshop first came out and they just said fuck it and made a fucking cool magazine. Oh yeah, no, for sure. When it first came out too, I had been skating for a while and there was nothing like that. I mean, those guys are <sighs> savage, you know what I mean? It was like a little porn magazine with skating in it. Big Brother magazine, which I love, which was kind of offensive and, you know, had lots of crazy, uh, you know, how to kill yourself and how to make a bong and how to go and get a big cup <laughs> Slurpee at 7-Eleven or whatever, big gulp and put a beer in there with ice and put the lid on and now all of a sudden teenage kids are buying beer. Like, just cool stuff like that that as teenagers it was just fun to see and really entertaining and kind of made skateboarding fun. People would approach the magazine uh, differently. Like everybody from the outside looked at us like we were this just insidious group of people who were out just to like fuck with people and ruin people and and do all these bad things and we were really just having just goofing off and having fun and didn't really care about any of those things. I'm pretty sure Chris Sen hated it. I remember one time he had a skateboard he wrote I hate Earl Parker on the yeah. skateboard. <laughs> well, I think it was like Chris Sen's girlfriend. I was just jealous. Jealous of him. It started at the San Francisco contest. Uh -huh. right? He'd seen this girl and kind of focused on her. Later, at the next contest that was at the Palo Peralta um, Park, he ended up writing this whole fantasy about her licking her earlobe. All this <laughs> she stuff. actually, we, we actually oh, yeah, labeled her as yeah. CSG. And she became <laughs> this character in the magazine, CSG, Chris Sen's girlfriend. I guess I shouldn't have wrote that one, you know, I don't, I kind of feel guilty about some of that stuff. <laughs> Sold as a teen skateboard magazine, Big Brother has upset a number of local parents because mixed in with skateboard articles and stories of graphic sex is an article that details how to kill yourself. Every sport has its own magazine. But one skateboarding publication takes its topic off the streets and sidewalks and puts it in the bedroom. Jeff Michael has a story. I loved it when the news showed up at World Industries. It was like, yeah, we're getting some press, you know, for our little magazine, you know. Well, here's something your children may be reading that you should definitely know about. It's a shocking magazine. It tells you how to commit suicide. It tells you all about drug use and also explicit descriptions of sex. It may seem hard to believe, but this magazine is really aimed at kids. Sylvia Lopez has the story behind Big Brother magazine. The owner and publisher of Big Brother refused to be interviewed for our story. His name is Steve Rocco. You know, they all do it under the guise of, like, Oh, we're coming down to, you to interview you for your side. You know, we're not going to slam you or make you look bad. So I came up with this idea. I made posters of her that said, Sylvia Lopez, media whore. And I put them everywhere. I had them on shirts, all the employees wore them. And then for hats, their competing news station, hats for all the employees. So whenever they tried to interview an employee, they had a show like Channel 11, which I knew they would never do. We did talk to the art director of Big Brother magazine, Basically, it's just all in the name of humor. That's what we're doing, and I think it's very obvious. In El Segundo, Sylvia Lopez, Channel 9 News. Rocco was cool because, like, we had this idea to change the format every single issue. We want to do trading cards. Yeah, do trading cards. Do cereal a box. cereal box, you know. So I started calling, you know, hey, magazine rep, I met this guy, and he, he helped us find a, a printer. But it, it's ridiculously expensive to just come up with these formats on your own, you know, versus a standard magazine format. But... Rocco was like, yeah, whatever it takes. Some, the, some excuses for some of the graphics that we were doing or some of the things that Big Brother were doing were because we can. Like one of the longest conversations I've had with Rodney was over this one cover of Big Brother. It was issue 15, but then I think on the cover we wrote number 666. And the picture on the cover was uh, Steve Olson from Shorties. And uh, Jeff had the idea to, dr to dress him up uh, in like a devil Halloween costume. And uh, then to get him ollieing over a pile of burning Bibles. Rodney was like, I wouldn't say dead set against it, but you know, he tried to, to steer us away from He's making strongly, that strongly suggested not to do it. <laughs> yeah. Steve was out of the office, you know, who knows where. So we got him on his cell phone, you know, whereas we had just talked to Rodney for like four hours straight, and Steve was like, if you don't come out with that cover, you know, I'm just gonna, th you're, you're just a bunch of fucking pussies or so <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I can't, don't want Steve to think that uh, we're pussies. <laughs> like it was under the best umbrella in skateboarding, so they had access to the best skaters. They're the first ones doing like dope video grabs or really good tricks. Big Brother revolutionized it by using video grabs. 
it was the best. It was just like the dirtiest, raunchiest magazine, but it was full of like some of the best skating because they didn't care about like running film. They'd and these guys were, were real critics, you know? They would go to the contests and they would write what they really thought. There was no level of uh, general niceness, which is kind of what the other magazines always do. Whereas Big Brother would be like, you know what, this guy was here, he was a kook. He sucked, his run sucked, and whatever. They would, they would say it, shoot from the hip, you know? They would just say it. There's a lot of shit that like they were doing that people remember the dumb shit over the like the really, really good stuff. All their covers were super innovative, you know what I mean, photography wise. And I just think it was a good magazine concept inside and out. And they were actually able to do stuff that you weren't allowed to do at Transworld. That you, you know, you didn't have to be professional in inverted commas to do a skateboard magazine. All you needed to do was just have an enthusiasm for it and be stupid and you you know skaters wanted to see what you wanted to see because they were the same as you, you know, whether they were from California or Nebraska or Wakefield. Just a lack of concern for offending people, which is basically what street skating is, you know, if you're worried about offending people, you're not going to go around waxing up ledges in the street.